Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another PS5 video. So it looks like we might finally have a workaround to get DLC working on our PS4 games for our PS4 fake packages that we run on the PS5. This is one of the biggest problems we've had so far with PS4 fake packages is that you can install your PS4 games and you can get them running, but DLC does not work. Even if you install the DLC packages, they just will not appear in game. You cannot use any of your DLC content. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate and this has been a problem since we were originally able to run ps4 fake packages on the ps5 back in october of 2023 and yet it's still a problem to this day however what idlesauce has managed to create here is an automated script that will allow you to patch the executables of the game to get them to load the dlc from the actual game update file instead of the individual dlc packages so it's a way of, it's kind of like a temporary workaround to get DLC working on the PS5. Now, it doesn't work on all games. It's been tested at the moment. It's fairly new. It only came out a day ago. And obviously some games are not working. Some games are working. So a bunch of you guys have been asking me to make a guide. So I'm going to show you exactly how the whole process works to use this to get DLC working on the PS5. So I did make a Twitter post about this and I said this looks promising. However, it does require quite a bit of work. The actual process is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward thanks to this automated script that basically does everything for you. The hard part is just getting all of the software tools and stuff installed and having everything that you need in order to be able to actually do this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the whole thing here in this video anyway for anybody who wants to have a crack at it. But uh, yeah, so firstly, what you're going to need, of course, is the Idle Sauces Eboot DLC Patcher, which you can download from here. I'll put all the download links in the description for everything that I can. You'll also need Python version 3.9, 3.10 or 3.11, not 3.12. And make sure you download the version from python.org and install that. And when you install it, make sure you select the option to add the python.exe to the path variable. Make sure you select that option in the installer when you're installing it. Do not use the version that you download from the Microsoft Store. Make sure it's the one you download from python.org's website. We also want self-util. We're going to use the Retro Gamer 74 version, which repackages it into an EXE, which is easier to use. And then we also want to download my patch builder application for the PS4 version 1.3.3. And then finally, one of the most difficult things to get a hold of is going to be IDA Pro. You are going to need to use IDA Pro for this. Now, IdleSauce's script is going to automate everything, so it's not really going to be complicated. What we're doing in IDA is still going to be fairly simple thanks to the script. However, this is kind of a difficult piece of software to get because, uh, well, for one, the full version is very expensive, so most people use cracked versions. And, you know, there are some cracked versions out there that have viruses in them. So you'll just need to make sure that you're careful about where, where you end up getting this. And I cannot leave any links to any cracked versions in the description, unfortunately. So you'll have to source this application yourself. It needs to be IDA Pro version 7.5 or higher, uh, not anything lower than 7.5. And then we also want the PS4 module loader by Socratic Bliss. And it needs to be, again, the version for 7.5 or higher and go ahead and download that. So once you have all of that stuff downloaded, we can kind of start to get into things here. So what we want to do, first of all, is grab a game. So I'm using Resident Evil Village as an example. I've got the game package file, the game update, and we have four DLCs. We've got our survival pack, trauma pack, unlock all rewards and weapon parts DLC. So I've got all these DLC packs. So what we want to do first of all is extract the game update. Now, if the game doesn't come with an update, if it's only the base version, then you'd be extracting the actual game package file. But if you have an update, then you're going to want to be extracting the update. In most cases, it's going to be the update that we're going to be doing. So we're going to open up the patch builder application and we're going to take our update file. Make sure it's the latest update that you were able to get for the game. And we're going to copy that into the package extraction section in the tool and go to extract package and then we're going to select all and I'm just going to select the USB drive as the location where I'm going to extract it. So select a location on your computer and export files and that will go ahead and extract the patch to its raw game files onto the computer. 
Okay, so if we go back to the USB drive, we now have this dash patch folder, and then we've got our image zero, which has all of the game files. So what we want to do in here is we want to add folders for our DLC content in the root of the image zero folder. So in order to do this, we need to find out what the content ID of our DLC packs are. So if I go back into the USB drive and I take one of these DLC packs, if I go back into my patch builder application and then grab one of the DLC packs, we'll take the survival pack first and drag that in and we'll get the content ID right here. And you want to copy the last part of the content ID, which should be the last 16 characters after the dash. So in this case, it's survival pack 0000. So we want to copy that, copy that name right there. In fact, I can just double click it and then control C. You can't right click, unfortunately, you'll just have to do control C to copy it on the keyboard. And then if we go back into our image zero folder, we're going to create a new folder. And this folder is going to be named the name of the content ID for the DLC. So survival pack 0000. We're going to go ahead and call it that. So there we go. We've got our folder. And then we want to extract the DLC pack into this location. So I'm just going to copy the location here and then extract package, select all, and I'll paste that location and export files. And that will copy all of the files into that location. So what you want to do is go into the image zero folder in here and cut all of the DLC files that are in here and paste them just in the root of this survival pack folder. In this case, your content ID folder, and then we can get rid of this folder. And that is what you want to have right here. Now the SCE system folder should be empty. If it is empty, you don't need it. You can just delete that and you should be good. So that's all we need to do there. We've now got our DLC added and you want to repeat this process for any other DLC packs that you have. So I'm going to go ahead and just repeat that with the other DLC packs, the trauma pack, unlock all rewards and the weapons parts pack as well. Okay, so that's me done all of them now. So you can see in the image zero folder of our updates, we've got survival pack and we've got the DLC file in there. And then we've got our trauma pack. We've got the DLC in there, unlock all rewards and weapon parts as well. So that is how you want to have them right there. So, okay, so what we want to do is take our eboot.bin, which is the main game executable file, and we're going to drag it on top of selfutil.exe and let go. And that should unpack it or unf self it. If we refresh, we should now get an elf file instead. So we can delete the original eboot.bin. And now we've got our kind of decrypted executable, our eboot.elf. So what we're going to do is I'm going to drag that over to my desktop here. Copy that over to my desktop. Okay, so now we need to open up the elf file in IDA. So we're going to open up IDA. I'm using version 7.5. It needs to be 7.5 or higher. So in your IDA folder where you have the exe file, this is where we need to extract our PS4 module loader. So we're going to open up the module loader from Socratic Bliss. And we're going to take the loaders folder, the Python folder and the TIL folder. And we're going to drag that into our IDA folder and replace any files in destination to get the module loader installed. And if you're using version 7.5, I think you also need uh, IDA Python. So IDA 7.5 service pack 3 Python version 3.9. I just download the Windows zip here and then open it up and do the same thing. Just extract the contents into your IDA folder. And then hopefully that should be everything you need to get IDA working with PS4 ELF files. So from here, we can go ahead and run IDA. So wait, make sure you run the IDA 64-bit executable. So IDA64.exe, click OK, click on New. And of course, you want to then select your eboot.elf file. Okay, and for some reason, when loading the Resident Evil Village executable, I get this warning message. I've not seen this with other executables that I've tried to load and it's not giving me the option to select the PS4. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this. So if you do run into that error message, there is a fix uh, IdleSauce kindly provided, which is to go back into the IDA folder and then go to the loaders folder and then scroll down to the PS4 module.python file. If you go in there, open that up and scroll down to the elf section header table and just comment out this line by putting a hashtag before it and that will comment out that line. 
and then that should fix that issue. Again, it doesn't happen on every executable, at least with this particular version of IDA. It only seems to happen with Resident Evil Village. But now that I've made that change, you can see we now have the PS4 main module ASLR. That is the option you want to select right there and click OK. OK, so now we're just waiting for it to disassemble everything. And this is going to take a while. You can see in the bottom left hand corner, it's showing the addresses uh, as it's working its way down. So you're just going to go ahead and wait until that says idle. Once it says idle, that means it has finished disassembling the whole executable. And this can take some time. You might have to wait anything anywhere from like a couple of minutes to even half an hour in the worst cases. But uh, yeah, just go ahead and wait for that to finish and then we'll jump back in. OK, so that actually took a really long time. Unfortunately, some of these executables are really, really large, take a while to analyze. But as you can see, it says idle now. So what we can do now is run the script file from idle sauce. So we're going to go to the file section and select script file. So we're going to select the script file from idle sauce, the DLC patcher, select open. And then it's going to ask you if you want to manually select the strings or automatically select them. Automatic is a lot easier, so we'll just select automatic. And then it's going to ask us for all of the content IDs of the DLC that we're adding. So if we head back here, we've got all of the DLC packs that I added here. So we're just going to put them in the list that you want them to be loaded in. So survival pack first, I'm going to do this one. And we're just going to paste them in here. So we'll do all of these. So I've got the survival pack, trauma pack. Put that one in there. Next one. So four DLC strings. So we're going to put the content IDs and list them all in there. And that is the order that they're going to be loaded in the game. So I think if, if a game has to load specific DLCs in a specific order, then you want to have them ordered in the way that they should be loaded. The first DLC, second DLC. I have seen some DLCs that are like in different parts. There's like like the DLC pack part one, part two, part three. So you probably want to order them in the correct order. But it shouldn't be a problem in most cases. So we can click OK and let it do its thing. Generating list of strings. It's going to find what it thinks is the best strings to replace and it will replace them with our DLC strings. OK, and there we go. And once it's done, it should give us our eboot underscore patched dot elf which we're going to go ahead and put on our USB drive back in the image zero folder. We're going to save it in there. And there we go. Patching complete. Click OK. And that's it. We should be done with this. So we can close out of IDA now. I'll pack the database so that we don't have to, you know, if we want to add more DLCs in future, we can just load the database so it doesn't have to reanalyze the file again because that takes forever. So now that we have that done, we've got our patched eBoot. Let's refresh this. Here it is right there, ebootpatched.elf. And what we want to do is rename this back to ebootbin. So if you still have the original ebootbin in here, make sure you delete it and then rename our patched one back to ebootbin. Then click yes. And that is essentially it. So all we need to do now is repack this update back into a package file again and then we can install it onto the game. So to do that, once again, we're going to use our patch builder application. So we want to go into the uh, title ID dash patch folder and then drag the image zero folder into the project location. So drag and drop it in there. Then we want to grab the base game package file and copy that into the path to original game package. So pop it in there. And then finally, our output path, I'm just going to put the root of my USB. I'm just going to have it write it in there. And then you just have to build the package file. So you click build package and it starts building it right there. There it is. Luckily, this update file is quite small, so at least this shouldn't take too long. Yeah, the, the patch is only about 800 megabytes. There, there we go. Done. And you can see our updated patch is quite a bit bigger than the original. The original one was 800 megabytes. This one's almost a gigabyte because it has those four DLC packs included in the update file now. So now that that's done, we can close out of our patch builder and we finally have our DLC repacked into the update file. So all we need to do is install this package file on the PS5. So if it's not already on the USB drive, copy it over to the USB drive. And we're not going to be installing the DLC packages because we don't need that anymore because we've basically included those DLC packages in the update file. So all we need to do now is install this update package 
and all the DLC should be included in that. So all you need to do, if you don't already have the game installed, copy the game package file and the update package file, of course, onto the root of a USB, and then we can connect that USB to our PS5 and install the updates. Okay, so here we are on the console. Obviously, you'll need to run the uh, PS4 fake package enabler, the K-Stuff payload, or you can run the ETA Hen, which has the K-Stuff payload built in. So make sure you run that first of all, and then we can head to our settings, go down to the debug settings, game package installer. And of course, we're going to install, first of all, the game. If you don't already have the game installed, let's get that installed first. All right, there's the game installed and now we're going to install the patch, making sure we actually install the correct one that has the DLC on it. So that'll get added to downloads. It's only, again, about a gigabyte, so it should take a few seconds to install. Hopefully. Yep, there we go. Updated. Okay, so let's give this a try. Let's just make sure this has actually updated. So we're on 1.13. Give this a shot. Hopefully the DLC will be loaded. Okay, here we go. So this is something that I believe should only pop up if you have DLC installed. Extra content shop, all access voucher. You have obtained all rewards in extra content shop. So that'll be the all rewards DLC that we had there. All access voucher, trauma pack, there it is. Following items have been added to your game. Samurai Edge, Mr. Everywhere weapon charm, trauma pack. That's all trauma pack stuff. Limited, following items, weapon charm, survival resource pack. There we go. Uh, would you like to recap Resident Evil 7 story? Nope, I'm good. Okay, so hopefully that should be enough to kind of prove that it's actually working here. I don't actually have a save on here and it would be kind of awkward to... Uh, wait, hold on. Extra content shop. Yeah, there we go. It says purchased, right? I believe most of this stuff must be DLC related. All of these different packs, purchased, purchased, purchased. All right, I think we're good. Hopefully that should be enough to show that the DLC is working. So yeah, as you can see, it does clearly work, but it doesn't work on all games. I have tried a bunch of other games that it has not worked on so far, uh, like Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I also tried God of War Ragnarok and Dying Light 2. So far, those have not had any success with. I tried the same method and the DLC still does not appear in those games. But there are a handful of games at the time of recording that have already uh, been put out with DLC attached thanks to this method. So it's kind of hit or miss at the moment, but hopefully the compatibility can be improved over time and maybe get more DLC working. But yeah, definitely give it a try if you're up for it and see if you can get more DLC working for your games. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.